everybody, this is Mr. Allaire, and welcome to part one of a special two-part uh, podcast involving biology dissections. In this particular podcast, we're going to go over some safety guidelines that you should be aware of so that you can be successful in your dissections. So there are 10 guidelines that we're going to discuss in this podcast. And uh, But before we get into that, I just wanted to take a couple of moments to talk about why we do dissections in the first place. Uh, of course, dissections are fun. It's an important part of uh, studying biology. Uh, but the real reason is because we want to not only view, but also be able to compare both the internal and external structures of different organisms to each other, as well as to ourselves. Um, Ideally, I like to have my students do three dissections, a worm, a frog, and a fetal pig. Um, but as I talk about, especially when we do uh, classification as well as human anatomy and physiology, we all come with uh, the best built-in study guide available, and that's our own bodies. So I do encourage you to use your own body and to uh, compare uh, what we have as human beings to the organisms that we'll be dissecting in class. So let's go ahead and jump into things, and let's take a look at rule number one. Pretty self-explanatory. You need to listen up, uh, listen for directions, and respond immediately so that you don't miss instructions. A lot of times in the middle of dissections, I might call everybody's attention to point out an important safety rule, something that you should be aware of, a specific direction, or something that I want you to take a look at in particular with your dissection. So please make sure that you're listening up and paying attention. Now this of course means that you are not going to be plugged in with any kind of iPod or iPhone or MP3 player kind of device. Those things have no place in the dissection lab whatsoever. Rule number two is absolutely no horseplay. Labs are fun and dissections are fun, but we're going to be playing with some rather sharp and pointy instruments that we'll be talking about in part two of this podcast. So that increases the risk of injuries, not only to ourselves, but to others around us. So while I do encourage you guys to have fun, please make sure that you're having fun within limits. And again, no horseplay whatsoever. Along those lines, rule number three is that you must remain at your lab station at all times. Uh, labs tend to be sort of a more social atmosphere. And again, I do encourage you guys to have fun and to talk with each other, but for safety's sake, please make sure that you stay at your lab station. Again, people are going to be using sharp instruments, and if you try to uh, go over and talk to somebody, sneak up behind them, it does increase the risk of injury, not only to yourself, but to other people around you. Rule number four is always wear your goggles, aprons, and gloves. All of the specimens that we're going to be looking at are preserved, which means that they have been soaked in chemicals uh, in order to keep them from breaking down and decomposing. Uh, and it's all fun and games until you get those things on your clothing, uh, on your skin, and of course in your eyes. So we do always need to make sure that we're wearing proper safety equipment. Uh, goggles and aprons, as you know, are available in the classroom, and I will have gloves available for everybody once we begin dissections. Rule number five is, of course, again, because all of our specimens have been treated with chemicals, we always want to keep our hands away from our face, our eyes, and our mouths. We don't want to get those, we certainly don't want to get those chemicals on the external part of our bodies. And if you start touching your face, your eyes, or putting your fingers in your mouth, if you're a uh, nail biter like I am, uh, then you run the uh, increased risk of getting those chemicals inside of you. Uh, and that puts you more at risk for uh, some uh, injuries in, uh, in different ways. Rule number six is that if you feel ill at any time for any reason, please let me know right away. Uh, all of the windows are going to be open. The doors are going to be open. Again, the specimens are treated with chemicals. And there have been times where students may have some kind of an adverse reaction to the chemicals that the specimens are treated with. If you feel dizzy, if you feel ill, or anything like that, all you have to do is let me know. Go outside, get some fresh air, take a few really deep breaths. Uh, if it's more serious, we'll uh, take care of that when it comes up. Rule number seven is when we are doing dissections, we always want to make sure that we properly mount our dissections and handle the instruments, particularly the scalpel, with extreme care. We never do any dissections by holding the specimen and cutting into it with the scalpel. We don't do that. 
We also don't handle the scalpel the way we would handle a steak knife. We're not trying to saw into our specimen. And if you really have to struggle, if you really have to work at cutting into your specimen, you're doing something wrong. Take a, take a breath, step back, reevaluate what you're doing. We always want to make sure to be careful. And the scalpels are very, very sharp. And we'll talk about that more in the next podcast, but they are very, very sharp and they do cut skin uh, very, very easily for all of our specimens. So uh, we do want to make sure that uh, you handle all of those things with care. Rule number eight is that uh, all of the specimen's parts that we will occasionally be removing to look at things deeper down in the specimen must be disposed of in the trash can, not the sink. If we put things down the drain, we run the risk of stopping up the drain. We run the risk of things decomposing and attracting all kinds of nasty smells and bugs and critters and things like that. So we do need to make sure that at the end of the day when we're cleaning up, anything that we've removed from our specimen, unless I've told you to hold on to it, must be put into the trash can and not the sink. Rule number nine is we always want to make sure to clean up our area and return all of the equipment to the proper place. And we also want to wash down our table completely using soap and a sponge. All right? Uh, I'm not your parents, and I'm not dressed up as a maid or a butler, so I'm not going to be cleaning up after you guys. You need to make sure to clean up everything and put it back to uh, in the appropriate spot. That means that if we're doing dissections for multiple days, we've wrapped up our animals and we've put them away properly. Any glassware, any equipment that we've used has been returned to where we got it from. Nothing gets left on the tables. Nothing gets left in the sinks. And of course, again, we wash down our tables completely with soap, water, using a sponge that's available to you. Last but not least, rule number 10 is, of course, when we're done, I want to make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water when you finish. This is especially important for those of us who, like me, are nail biters and like to uh, nibble on their nails. If you are prone to putting your fingers in your mouths, up your nose, or in your eyes, this is especially good for you. And of course, if you are doing dissections right before a period where we have recess uh, and you want to get a snack, or of course right before lunch, you want to make sure to wash your hands very thoroughly. So that's our big top 10 rules for dissections, and uh, that's going to do it. And so I hope this podcast was helpful, and I will see you in part two.